it is a mistake to engage and stay. You're going to get flanked. Hit, move, relocate, and create a chase. Hit, move, relocate, and create a chase. And we see Oresu do that in this fight scene. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Seeing Fight, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Logan Love. I'm Chad Vasquez. And today we're breaking down the classic hammer scene from the original 2003 Old Boy starring Choi Min Sik as Ode Su. It's actually our second hammer scene that we've done, the first one being Raid 2. So if you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. All right, so you ready for this? Uh, yes, I guess, yeah. Okay, so Ode Su has a knife against a captive's throat. That's a lot of dudes, man. Did he just drop the knife? He did, okay. I probably wouldn't have done that. Okay, so he's left with the hammer. He's doing a lot of low shots. He's doing good targeting here. Flanked the guy, but is himself flanked by all the opponents. Yeah. So originally he had people in the funnel and he allowed himself to get flanked and now yeah. he's paying for it. Ooh, that's a lot of abuse. It's a beat down. All right, you know what? I'm gonna say in a real fight, I would call this right now. Yeah. What's interesting is you see they're not actually using the weapons that they have. Yeah. I mean, I understand cinematically why they wanted to do that, why they wanted to show this amazing scene and have this person survive. Mm -hmm. But in reality, right, they're taking their sticks yeah. and they're just stomping him like this as well as stomping him. Yes, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, he just had a stick broken against his back. He's wildly now swinging the hammer. Right, that was a, a cool Ooh. stomping session. He's, yeah. Interesting, so he's hitting the feet. That makes sense, right? He's a downed opponent and he's gonna hit the closest thing to him. Slamming this onto someone's toes, you're breaking feet, you're mm -hmm. incapacitating them. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Unfortunately, whereas in the beginning, he had them in the funnel, which means everyone's in front of him. Mm -hmm. So they're all approaching him, not one-on-one, -on -one, but at least two or three on one versus all 30 or 40 or how many people are there. Here, he's gotten flanked from both sides and now he's paying for it. Oh, did he just take a knife? In, oh, he oh, took a knife in back. the back. He's having his back. He's not having a good day. With the knife in his back, how's it playing a role besides maybe bleeding? Yeah, I mean, so it's interesting. This is yet another instance and we've seen it before in Born Identity in Nobody where the weapon is impaled in the person. Mm -hmm. Here it's in his back, so he probably can't extricate it easily. He can't sure. reach it. Yeah. There is a danger if you have a long weapon, like an arrow, an arrowhead sticking into an animal. As the animal runs, because the longer length of the arrow is outside, it's cutting up the inside of the animal. Here, because it's a much shorter weapon, it's a knife in the back, you don't have that jiggle as much, but certainly it's continuing to cut as he moves. He just hopped back up. Oh, bam, front kick. He's just punching. Okay, he nice. regained the funnel. All right, so we have some classic boxing, right? Jabs, one twos. Just doing hooks here. All right, so now the guards are getting a little intimidated. So there's a uh, mentality, a mental fact that happening now of fear. Okay, one goes in and. Ooh, our right, cool liver shot. Nice. Okay. Just backing up, leaving distance here. Long one guy to come out at a time. Just hit with his hard strikes, which meant the guy must punch like, like an ox, right? Yeah. Boom. Okay. It's gonna flame. A lot of weaving. Really nice weaving too, I have to say. All right. Oh, nice job. Yeah, he's all, he's backing up, letting them come one at a time. Right. Which makes sense. And this, and this guy. Chad guaranteed that would be me. Yeah. If so I'm in a group fighting, I'd be like, ah, go on. You're flopping. Me. Yeah. I'd, I'd have been playing dead. Sure. Way by the door. I would have. Not yeah. stupid. Yeah. Not stupid nah, people. Man. What? No. Nah. And this guy does not. Yeah. He's like, my crew's down. I got a flop now. I ain't, I ain't handling this. Yeah, that's totally me. Yeah. And this. Oh, <laughs> he just goes, yeah. Two, three. Stops that fear right away. Yeah. Yeah. I like how they're showing he's tired because I would be exhausted. By yeah. Now. All right. Listen. Ode Sue, man, that guy is made of iron because. I'm not taking that much abuse, I don't think. No. All right. Oh, he picked up the weapon again. Hammer. Hammer. So he's kind of holding it and not. Oh, and they just <laughs> throw <laughs> throwing sticks. They're just throwing sticks at him. <laughs> That's... They're just throwing the sticks at him. He's backing away. He's like, I'm, I'm trying out. to show just at least some effort. And end scene. Now, before we continue, just want you to know this is one of my favorite fight scenes in general. Having said that, though, 
We understand that it was shot cinematically a certain way for a certain look and aesthetic. It looks really cool. But Chad and I are just looking at the real world applications of the fighting techniques that are used. First of all, how Odesu could have used Sinawali, double weapons, rather than just sticking to the single hammer. And let's also talk about fight tactics, you know, keeping people in the funnel and what that means. Let's do it. So in the beginning of the scene, Odesu has both a knife and a hammer. However, he drops the knife and relies only on the hammer in his dominant right hand. Two things happen. One, a man runs at him and throws a big haymaker. He ducks underneath the haymaker, comes around, spins, slams the leg to the second person, and then continues with his progression. It makes sense, but it's suboptimal when he had access to a secondary weapon. As we saw with Hammer Girl in the Raid 2, she used two weapons simultaneously so she could attack at the same time, attack and defend, or defend and attack. Let's look and see what Odesu could have done had he had the hammer still in his dominant hand and a knife in his secondary hand. So once again, an assailant is running at me. I merely hold out my weapon. He runs into it or not. If he doesn't run into it, I'm no worse off than I did not have a knife in the first place. But we assume arguendo, ideally he runs into it. I pull this out, I continue my spin. I slam this into the knee, but now I have the additional weapon. I finish off that assailant now. So now I have two less assailants to worry about. Whatever the number is, let's say it was 40, now I have 38 to deal with. And I can continue my progression. With all of that, he now has two things of lethality with which to deal with a multitude of people. Why would he give up one weapon? That doesn't ring true to me, even for someone that's not trained. Clearly, it was a director's choice to have that scene be a hammer only scene, and I understand that. So we talk about environment a lot when it comes into fighting. Here, we're gonna talk about something called the funnel. The funnel is essentially what's in front of you. So if you've seen the movie 300 that talks about the Battle of Thermopylae, the only reason why 300, 300 um, Spartans could fight off an entire army of Persians is because they didn't have to deal with all of the Persians at once. Instead, they just had to deal with the number that were in front of them. So they could finish off the first group in front of them and then finish off the second group and so forth and so on. By maintaining the funnel, there is a chance that Odesu would have won in a real fight against multiple attackers. Why? Because he only has to deal with the one or two in front of him. However, by breaking the funnel, by allowing himself to get flanked, so Chad, if you get behind me, as I'm attacking this person, nothing's stopping the person from behind me from attacking me in some manner. Freedom, I think. <laughs> One of your primary objectives is to maintain that funnel and not allow yourself to get flanked. Now, later on in the scene, Odesu recreates a second funnel. He actually goes through everyone and then now is on the other side of the funnel. So now this is a perfect opportunity for Chad to talk about fighting multiple attackers with, out any weapon, unarmed. So Odesu is now moving forward with mostly boxing now at this point. Within the funnel that Logan mentioned, the first attacker that engages Odisu, he goes with a lead punch where Odisu does a snapback. So the punch happens, here we go. Now, both fighters engage her with the second punch and they kind of lock up here. But now look, Logan is open for this liver shot. From here, he performs this turning action, right to the spot there. Now let me tell you something. I have been dropped twice in my training by liver shots. Mm. One by knees and definitely by a punch. That is no joke. It feels like there's this aggressive, painful cramp inside your organ and your whole body covers up. And I'm telling you, when a good liver shot lands, you are not fighting back. You, you're at the mercy of what that person wants next of you. You're just in a ball in the field position and if they wanna do whatever, it's happening, bro. I'm sorry, that's, that's what it is. So it is a very powerful shot. In a boxing context, or just let's say general fighting, a good way of staying up is also just being aggressive on the neck, around the head here. So I can use combinations to get a guard up. And when I see that, boom, that's opening. So for example, I throw a one, two, level change, and my head moves to the side. So now when I rotate, that's my hook. So from here, as I pull back, boom, that's my liver shot from there. And that's what Horisu does to the first guy that comes at him. And it's a really cool technique and it's very effective when it lands right. So, Odesu, he delivers that body shot, the liver shot. You can see that the opponent is out of the fight for a while, for good reason. Odesu backs up and now is being engaged by multiple people. Let's take this opportunity to go over fight theory against fighting multiple people, hand to hand, and how boxing can fit into that context. First off, try to avoid that as much as possible. Definitely. The chances of you being effective, even with training, is very low, very low. But here's what I'd say. 
You want to deal with one guy at a time. Now it's tough. Most likely the person in front of you, his allies are flanking. So you have to move. What you actually do see, or this would do a lot. You see, he goes in the following tactic. Makes contact, head movement, back away, there's space. The new space that's made now, someone has to take up that slack. So his hope is that it's one person at a time. It is a mistake to engage and stay. You're going to get flanked. Hit, move, relocate, and create a chase. Hit, move, relocate, and create a chase. That's a, the best way I could think of in which boxing fits in the context of fighting multiple people. And we see Oresu do that in this fight scene. For sure. And also, if you're a part of the mob, there's at least a little part of you that's thinking, I'm gonna let Bob go. I'm gonna let John go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang back a bit. So it's not completely unrealistic that a single person could survive against a melee attack. However, in this scene, he unfortunately ends up in the ground. Now, Chad is my instructor in groundwork. And the reason why groundwork is so important is because fights do in fact end up in the ground. Here's the issue. One-on-one -on -one fight ends up in the ground. I have a chance thanks to the great training I've had from Chad. However, if I'm on the ground and I've got like eight, 10, 20 people coming at me at once, at this point, that fear that I just mentioned, oh, I'm gonna let Bob go, changes to, oh, he's down? Let me have a piece of this. There is that danger. So in my opinion, and I think Chad would agree with me, that first time that he fell, in reality, unless he's extremely lucky, or as Chad said, the assailants are particularly nice, I don't think he would have survived that. I agree. Be on the ground when fighting multiple people is a huge no-no. One of the skill sets that we do teach in grappling is the skill set of standing up during resistance. And that's a very important skill set, especially if you're fighting multiple people. So it's best to the following. If you find multiple people, one, don't engage it. Don't engage it. <laughs> okay, especially it'll be in the ground. Apologize, apologize, say I'm sorry, terrible mistake, I'm out. In any way you can, apologize, anyway. okay? And if you have to engage them, movement, baby, movement. Yeah. Move the head, move your feet, relocate, and try to deal with one person at a time. Right. And boxing can play a role in that strategy. For sure. One thing I wanna talk about the narrative of this, sorry, is Ode Su is basically in solitary confinement for X number of years. So all he can do is shadow box. And in a lot of traditional martial arts, when you're dealing with things that um, have all of these forms, one thing that you're missing is distancing. The reason why people that practice Muay Thai, that practice grappling, that practice jujitsu, they tend to do better than people that only do traditional martial arts without active sparring is because grapplers and strikers that have active sparring, they're always measuring out distance. So the jab hand is the measuring tool, okay. I'm not hitting you, I'm not hitting Now I'm hitting you. I know where you are, now I can finish you. That's something that I feel is unrealistic. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's a little bit unreasonable to believe that Odesu would be so accurate when it comes to fighting this group of people. I love this scene. It's shot beautifully, it's really cool. The weapons weren't used by either side. Neither Ode Su nor the assailants really used the weapons to the maximum capacity. Ode Su did have some cool movements with the hammer, but gave up the knife completely. The assailants barely used the sticks. They essentially threw the sticks at Ode Su. I felt that they could have done much better with the weapons work. On the flip side, we see Ode Su use good boxing concepts to maintain the funnel and not allow him to get flanked so much as we saw when he was using weapons. Good box combinations, liver shots, footwork and backing up maintain distance. But highly unrealistic. I mean, really, he should have died twice. With that being said, we give this scene a B minus. Now go buy these awesome t-shirts, people.